Hello, so would you Hi mind there. by starting just by introducing yourself and telling us what it is that you do and your work here over at uh, Bleak? Yep, uh, my name's Tom Gibbs and I'm one of the uh, two uh, bison rangers on the Wild of Bleak project. Um, and uh, yeah, at the moment it's kind of uh, all action really on, on the project. Um, we're working on getting all the infrastructure and uh, everything in place basically for the bison's arrival, which we're hoping is sort of imminent keeping all the fingers and toes crossed um, so yeah really exciting we can't wait for them to arrive and it's just like I said just get everything ready so that when they move in hopefully it'll be like a really seamless transition um, for for their arrival so yeah it's 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 fantastic it's kind of finally here all this sort of talking and planning um, it's uh, we're getting to the sort of the, uh, the, the the end of it and um, you know hopefully the bison will be here I can see that you are quite excited. So yes. tell me, how does it feel to be uh, Britain's first uh, bison uh, officer? Yeah, I mean, um, it's one of those that uh, every time we, we get sort of asked, it is you kind of have to keep on pinching yourself and remind yourself that um, it's such a unique opportunity and, uh, you know, such a privilege um, to, to have been chosen. Um, it's, it's something that when, when I saw the, you know, the role come up, um, I just remember thinking, whoever gets that job is going to be so lucky. Um, never in a month of Sundays did I think that I'd be sort of sat here, you know, talking to you about it. Um, so yeah, just just really sort of humbled and and you know so lucky to be part of the, the amazing teams as well that we have here. You know, with Kent Wildlife Trust, Wildwood Trust, and and um, you know, it's just amazing people, amazing project, and yeah, it's it's actually. Uh, you know, because the, the role is going to change even more, so I can't wait to, for the bison to arrive because that's kind of when you know the bison range part of it really kicks in. So, yeah, I can't wait. Absolutely. So, obviously, there might be a few people watching this thinking, Oh, wow, that's the guy who got the job. Um, <laughs> so, how did you end up? Uh, what was your journey to it? How did you uh, get, the, get the role? Yeah, so um, I, I have a background in sort of uh, in, you know, environmental conservation, in, particularly in the southeast of England. So, uh, I used to work for Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust, and I've worked for sort of other parks and things like that in previous to that so um so really like my my experience comes from quite a practical um conservation background so lots of hands-on stuff um you know, going out with volunteers and 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 doing sort of the the cutting and the, the you know raking and, and all of that side of things so um I, I you know i've worked with with grazing livestock as well but nothing like bison before so that was quite an unusual element to the job role you know no bison experience needed um, for, for, for working with them but um, so in that sense you know I've, I have worked in these kind of uh, areas before but this is a completely new sort of you know ground and territory really for myself and and for a well, while for, for, for everyone I think um, with, with the bison but uh, but yeah it, it, it's one of those things that um, you know went through uh, you know the, 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 sort of the process with um, uh, you know the recruitment and yeah just each step of the way was just kind of like a surprise that I managed to get through to the next round and um, yeah you know like I said uh, just really privileged and um, you know chuffed to bits really to be able to uh, be able to lend my, my expertise to the, the project. Right so bison have been extinct for around 5,000 years, something like that? Yeah, 6,000 6, years. Yeah, so post uh, the last ice age, yeah. So what, what's the uh, utility in bringing them back? Um, so uh, essentially bison are being brought back to sort of replace this um, ecological niche that would have been filled by the ancient steppe bison and other large um, free roaming herbivores. Um, we, we've sadly are lacking here in the UK with any such wild. You know, we have deer populations, but um, what each different kind of grazing animal will do they all fill different sort of niches and the bison because of their big stature and they're so powerful and um, you know they they're not put off by going into really dense vegetation or rubbing up against a tree or debarking a tree um, these are sort of behaviors that you don't see so much in in other animals um, so so yeah really we're looking to bring them in um, as ecological engineers so we're hoping they're going to shape the bleen and really kind of give it uh, the, the sort of um, uh, the, the turbo boost that it needs to really help support as many species as possible um, and and we're hoping the bison could do a fantastic job of that um, you know we've been to the Netherlands we've seen other places in mainland Europe where the bison have been brought back and, and they're doing an amazing job um, so we're really confident that we can replicate that here but um, you know it's it's very much a case of uh, you know case by case um, sort of study so we're going to be monitoring really closely um, and seeing just you know the impacts that they're having but we're, we're really confident it's going to be positive because you're starting off quite small scale, right? Is it is it four four that's individuals? Right. Yes, yeah, four to start with. So um, that's that's a good so, uh, sort of herd size. That's sort of the minimum that you can kind of almost classify as a herd. Um, so we'll start off with four, but there'll be a breeding herd, and and over time we're hoping that they'll um, they'll breed. And you know we've got we 
we think that um, you know it could support up to sort of ten uh, individuals, and that's our carrying capacity. So at that point, then we'd be working within a wider network of, of, of places and moving bison around. Um, but it is it's it's important to start small, see how the bison adapt to the site, how the, the site adapts to the bison as well, um, and 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 then you go from there really, and just see um, you know uh, yeah how how well the the, the site responds to them. And you mentioned that they're obviously quite a big, imposing, uh, imposing mm-hmm. animal. Might be a little bit sort of worrying for sort of local people to suddenly see these great, huge <laughs> things, sort of that they imagine are going to come uh, breaking through their gardens and so forth. How how do they uh, interact with with people? Um, well, so I mean, one of the biggest things is like most wild animals, they're very um, they're very cautious and quite timid. Um, you know, they, they they see people almost as much as a, th- a threat as we would see them. Um, so in that regard, you know, they they kind of choose the sort of the, the the sort of safe area that they feel you know comfortable in, and in that sense, there's actually quite few interactions sort of face to face with these animals. Um, like I said, they dictate where they're comfortable. So if I was to walk, you know, if you're a bison, I walk towards you. Bison will walk away rather than coming towards us. Only certain situations where that might be different, but then you know um, they they are placid animals. You know they they just want to go about their own business, and you know that's eating, drinking, you know resting. Um, that's what they want to do, um, and and if they're left to do that, they're, they're more than happy. So, but it, it is important, obviously, with the project that we will uh, to begin with um, the public and the bison are going to be kept separate. Um, you know by these fence lines that Don and I will be checking and making sure that they're okay. And then over time, we're hoping to slowly kind of integrate people into that equation and, and take people on safaris and and you know bring them closer to the bison um but this will always be done under kind of sh- quite strict sort of protocols and and sort of don't lie, uh, you know we'll be learning as much about the animals as they will be about us as well so it's it's really a case of of, of, of learning and, and adapting as we go but um it'll be a very slow methodical process we won't just be tracking people in there and going you know good luck course, um so it's it's exciting though we're really looking forward to being able to show people the bison and you mentioned that that's don he's the other bison ranger yes he's my colleague yeah, Don. Yeah. Of course. So tell us a little bit about the kind of the uh, the life cycle of a, of a bison. Like how long do they live? How how yeah. often they breed? Uh, so that kind of, that kind of, um, kind of so they can live in in the wild. Um, you know, females can live up to, to sort of twenty five years of age, and bulls sort of about twenty. Um, that's a really good long lived uh, you know animal. Um, then in terms of uh, their sort of reproductive cycle, um, you normally are looking at uh, the bulls become sort of sexually act- sexually active about four to six years of age. They won't start breeding at that, that age because there's normally a dominant bull. Um, so they will invariably move from their their sort of um, uh, you know their, their original herd, um, and then they'll go off and they'll become sort of nomadic for a period of time. And then when it comes into rutting season, which is is sort of around um, you know, August to sort of uh, October time, they'll come back into the herds, and that's when then they'll they'll mate with the um, with the cows. Um, and sometimes you get these bachelor herds as well of, of males that will form um, and they'll roam sort of in that interim period of time. Um, with females, uh, they tend to be um, you know, sexually mature from um, about the age of, of four. So they can have calves from that age. Um, again, it, it, a lot of it depends on the right conditions. So, um, you know, uh, if, if um, you know, the ball comes into, into the herd and everything's right, you know, they'll, they'll um, reproduce. Tends to be one um, calf uh, born after about nine months of gestation. So um, similar, quite similar to humans in that, that regard. Um, twins are quite un, 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 you know, unusual um, to be born um, at the same time. So we, if we get it, twins, it will be a real like, you know, hit the lottery, the jackpot. Um, and then yeah and then otherwise you know they form into herds uh, you know social herds um which c- can be quite sort of transient so can be anywhere to, from sort of uh, 10, 10 individuals up to normally about 20 25 sort of the top end um and these are constantly changing um you know throughout the year so in winter um they might sort of uh, you know uh, you know um uh, flare up in size um depending on their security if if there were predators around like that but then it might also uh, sort of you know food resources are, are less at that time of year compared to in the summer where obviously plenty um, of food to go around so individuals will be constantly moving throughout uh, the herds um, but what is sorry I should have mentioned this to begin with is what's really important is the matriarchal um, uh, female she's the individual who leads the, the herd she sort of decides where they're going to go to to feed to ruminate to drink um, 
and uh, she'll tend to stay with that herd, um, you know, for, for its entirety. But um, they're fascinating animals, you know, they're, we're still learning so much about them and um, they're hugely social. They tend to not be massively territorial. So, you know, like I said, there's lots of integration and movement and uh, that's what we try to mimic. Obviously, we haven't got many bison around that they can just roam free like that. So we kind of mimic that by moving the individuals. But who knows, in 20, 30 years time, we might have free roaming bison. So could that be a, a possibility? Think? Yeah, I think um, you know it's, it's a, another really important aspect of starting small is is obviously to make sure that everything, um, all the legislation and uh, you know uh, that the public uh, understand what we're trying to do, um, and and just to prove that it is feasible. Um, but over time, you know, there's no reason why with other, um, you know, sister sites and other areas um, that are interested in having the bleed, if we could create corridors, you know, it, it could be, uh, you know, possible. The likelihood is is probably quite slim, you know, in the immediate future, just because of the feasibility of things like roads, you know, trying to get around certain navigate roads, you know, and bison getting onto the M2 and, and whatnot. Um, but yeah like i said it, it, it's one of those that that's the the dream for you know long term that we would have bison you know roaming roaming freely but we obviously we understand that it's not always feasible so we'll we'll, we'll sort of um you know uh recalibrate as we go and and see what is was uh, possible but within the local area definitely because the bling is a fantastic area west bling where the, the bison have been released to begin with is is you know relatively small within the uh, the entirety of the bling, um, you know, it's about a quarter of the overall sort of size. Um, so there's scope even within the bling for them to, to, mm. to continue to sort of branch out. So that's the more immediate uh, plan. And, and why is it starting in, in bling and Kent as opposed to, you know, any other part of the UK? Um, I mean, a big, big part of that is, I think, just the... Um, the collaboration between KWT and and uh, Wildwood um, is the fact that they you've got these two fields of expertise so close to one another, and it's right here in in, in the bleeds. So you're not having to worry about other other stakeholders and ensuring that you get everybody on board in the sense of you know when woods are owned by. 15 different organizations it's very hard to get everybody on the same same sort of page um here we, we're just so fortunate that we've got this amazing woodland and um, this amazing opportunity that you know kent wildlife trust own the site and they have a lot of experience with you know managing woodlands like this and and you know uh, domestic livestock and then you've got wild wildwoods uh, expertise of dealing with you know these rare native species and 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 how to manage them um and the two it just marries up perfectly and the bleen is just on the doorstep which is fantastic um, but in terms of the local the locality, you know, obviously, you know, these collaborations could happen, but the bison could be brought back in big wilderness areas. But a big part of the project is to show that it can it can happen somewhere like this in you know relatively sort of you know developed area. You know, you've got big big towns and, and cities around here. You know, if it can be done here, it, it can be done anywhere um, in that sense. And I think it's very easy to say let's just go to a wild space already and do it there but this is proving that it can be done at the opposite end of the spectrum um, and if it can be done if it can be done in this situation you know you've proven for the rest of the field that actually you know this is the most difficult most challenging end it can happen anywhere else you know in that regard so it's really important to to you know and to connect with everyone locally as well to show you know what we've been deprived of for so long i was told that they have been observed urinating on rhododendrons and then rolling in them as a form of a mosquito repellent. Ah. Now, I was hoping that wasn't someone joking with me. Um, <laughs> but, Somebody's been having you on. Uh, right, perhaps. <laughs> but um, I was wondering um, any sort of surprising facts that you've learned about bison. Um, well, uh, again, it really one of the really interesting things when we were over in um, uh, the Netherlands, um, they have a big issue on a lot of their sites with um, uh, black cherry it's a type of tree that's like, invasive there um, and they absolutely loved it when they were over there so they before they'd had to go and they would have to get the tree poppers out and be cutting all these trees down and the bison all of a sudden were just like oh I really like this so they just started eating it and um, they were just doing their work for free, for, for free basically um, so that was really cool you know like a, a, an invasive species and then you see the bison moving in and going you know taking that out in a natural process again so no big chainsaws and you know mechanical um, uh, you know machinery to take these out so that was really interesting to see but um, but yeah I think um, one of my favorites uh, sort of facts about them really is just how how quick they are you know they think people see them as these big lumbering creatures and oh, 
you know they're so big they must be so slow but you know they have top speeds of you know 45 kilometers so nearly 20 miles per hour so they can really move so they're really agile and and sort of um you know uh yeah powerful creatures which you know you just got this image of driving an hour along in a car on a bike and keeping pace with you um because actually that was another really interesting um uh, like uh, learning from the Netherlands was um, in one of the sites, Slicken van der Heen, they have lots of conic ponies. And conic ponies were like, you know, being you know, horses, you know, that they um, uh, they can move really quickly and they were used to being like the fastest animals on the site. And then the bison were brought in, and all of a sudden, these, uh, these ponies, when the bison were running, I'm like, who the hell are these guys? Like, they're keeping up with it and the size. So it was just amazing again to see that, you know, um, yeah, they're, 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 like I said, they're just so they're agile and they're, you know, um, amazing creatures. So I'm not sure that I want to see a bison charging towards me at that <laughs> speed, but I would love to see them, one of them in full sprint. It'd be amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, Tom, thank you for your time. Thank you.